we are going to be talking about how to solve RL circuits in the time domain. Starting off, the equation for an inductor is that the potential across it is equal to the inductance value multiplied by the derivative of the current. Because the equation for this component includes a derivative, the result of this analysis is going to be a first order differential equation. And this differential equation has a standard solution, and that is if you have a derivative of f of t plus f of t divided by a constant, which is equal to a constant, the solution to that is going to be that f of t is equal to the final condition, f of infinity, plus the initial condition, f of zero, minus the final condition again, multiplied by e raised to the negative t divided by that constant tau. So tau we can get directly from the denominator right here, and f of infinity we can actually get by the product of tau and k. Multiplying the two gives us f of infinity. So the only thing we don't have here is our initial condition, f of zero. And the first part of solving an RL circuit is to find that initial condition. And though you can write a differential equation for all the voltage and currents within your circuit, it's easiest to solve for the inductor's current, I of t. And this is because the inductor's current can't change instantaneously. So when you're finding this f of zero value, or in this case, I of zero, the current before the switch flip and the current after the switch flip end up being the same value, which makes solving for the inductor's initial current a lot easier. So at this point, we're ready to begin our analysis. And I'm going to start off by redrawing my circuit in the switch's first position for time less than zero. So I've gone ahead and redrawn my circuit with the switch in the open position. So if we assume the circuit has been in this position for a long time, my inductor is going to go to its steady state behavior. And that is, it's going to behave exactly like a wire. So I'm going to draw that in. And our first job is to find this current IL. And this current is going to be the result of my 25 volts with these two resistors in series. So from here, we can solve for IL. And this is going to be our initial current, IL of zero. And this is going to be equal to 25 divided by the sum of these two resistors. And that's going to be 250. And that gives me a value of 0.1. And that's everything we need to find from this first circuit analysis. Now we can go ahead and analyze our circuit for after the switch flips. So once the switch flips, we end up with this new circuit and we can begin analyzing this circuit. And I'll start off by labeling my component currents. This is going to be I1. And IL is already defined for us, and it's going through these two components right here. Now we can label our node voltages, and I'll call this my ground. And if this is my ground, I can call this node 25 volts. This node is now connected to my ground, so I can call this 0 volts. And VL is referenced to ground, so I can call this node VL. And now we can write the equations for our components. If I write the equation for my 50 ohm resistor, I have that I1 is equal to 25 minus 0 divided by 50. Moving on to the 200 ohms, I have that IL is equal to 0 minus VL divided by 200. And now I have to write the equation for my inductor. And that is going to be the potential across it, which is going to be VL minus 0 is equal to my inductance value 0.05 multiplied by DIL DT. So now with our equations, we can begin putting things in our standard form. And what we're looking for is to write an equation involving constants, our function, and the derivative of our function. And in this case, the derivative of our function is going to be DIL DT. So we need to get the derivative DIL in the same equation as IL. And to do that, I can solve this equation for VL is equal to negative 200 IL. And now I can substitute this value of VL right here and I'll end up with negative 200 IL is equal to 0.05 DIL DT. And now we're a lot closer, but I need to get my derivative by itself, and I need to move my F of T to the same side of the equation. So rearranging this, we get that DIL DT plus 200 IL divided by 0.05 is equal to zero. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to rearrange this term. And over here, my tau is in my denominator and there's nothing multiplying f of t in the numerator. So it's not clear what my tau is. So algebraically rearranging this term, I can rewrite the equation as dil dt plus il divided by 0.05 divided by 200. 
and this term is my tau term, and this is going to be equal to zero. And at this point, we have everything we need to solve for IL. And I can write that IL of t is equal to f of infinity, and in this case, infinity is equal to k times tau, where this is my tau, and this is k. So the product of this is going to be zero, so f of infinity is going to be zero. So I can leave that term out. So IL of t is equal to zero plus f of zero, which we found to be 0.1 at the beginning, minus f of infinity again, so minus zero, multiplied by e to the negative t divided by tau. So 0.05 divided by 200. And this is the answer for IL of t. But suppose we want to find what VL of t is. To do that, all I have to do is go back to my equations and rearrange VL to be in terms of IL. And I have that equation right here. So VL of t is going to be equal to negative 200 multiplied by 0.1 times e to the negative t divided by my tau, which is 0.05 divided by 200. And that is the end of the problem. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.